Since formally becoming president in February, Raul Castro has introduced a series of economic reforms. Some are aimed at increasing food production. Farmers will be able to rent unused land from government collectives to grow crops and sell them at market prices. Other reforms seek to stimulate economic production, like dropping equal pay and salary cap rules that have been in place for nearly 50 years. Cuba expert Philip Peters of the Lexington Institute near Washington says the reforms are significant. They don't affect the fundamental human rights issues yet, and they haven't really fixed the fundamental problems in the Cuban economy yet. But these are changes, and, and uh, I think most Cubans are sitting up and taking notice and saying that these things are good, and they hope that things go much further. In April, the government allowed ordinary Cubans to buy DVD players, computers, microwaves, and other household items once restricted to companies and foreigners. Even though these goods cost far more than most Cubans can afford, flower vendor Lázaro Martínez welcomed the move. It's progress. Humanity is moving ahead, so we should too. The measures, including allowing Cubans to own cell phones, have eased some restrictions on daily life. But most experts agree they are not a sign that Cuba's leadership intends to relinquish political control. Juan Carlos Hidalgo heads the Latin American project at the Libertarian Cato Institute in Washington. We can see a discussion on how to improve productivity here, how to allow, allow farmers to get more uh, yields, uh, stuff like that. But we will never see a discussion on whether to allow uh, independent party running in a local election or allowing uh, groups to protest freely in the streets of Havana. But easing the shortages and inefficiencies of daily life may be enough to satisfy Cubans for now. Experts say Raul Castro is unlike his older brother Fidel, who ruled Cuba with an iron hand for almost five decades. But Raul and the leadership are intent on preserving socialism, says Philip Peters. I think they saw uh, a few years ago, and they said it out loud, we're coming to the end. These guys won the revolution 50 years ago. They, they're not going to be there forever. And they see that there's some threats to the longevity of this socialist project that they put in place in Cuba. And one of them is the economy. But after so many decades of state control of the economy, experts say Raul Castro may need to make deeper changes than the reforms introduced so far. Bill Rogers, VOA News.